I'm Brian Patrick. This week on For Veterans Only, we're in Colorado ski country, where disabled veterans have gathered from around the country to feel the freedom of the slopes. For Veterans Only is a national television news magazine for America's veterans and a presentation of Veterans Productions USA. We're here at Powderhorn Resort home of the VA National Winter Sports Clinic on the beautiful Grand Mesa near Grand Junction, Colorado. At 10,000 feet, this is the highest flat top mountain in the world. Sandy Trombetta with the VA Med Center in Grand Junction is the director of this event. And Sandy, this is a dream come true for you. It really is a dream come true. Uh, I first got this idea and almost it was a dream. It really was. I saw through the handicap program here at Powderhorn how disabled skiers were able to get around and be taught by their own fellow disabled uh, handicapped skiers. I began to develop this concept of how a program can work like this and I saw it. I saw it in my mind's eye. And I really wanted to see veterans helping veterans, not having able body population uh, doing the instructing, but having the veterans themselves providing the instruction. It must take an incredible amount of people, dedicated people, to make it all work. It takes a, a monumental effort. We have to get the guys here, we have to move them in buses, we have to have adaptive uh, materials so we can get them around. Uh, it's phenomenal how much work and different resources it takes to do a program like this. We started off very, very small, but what has happened now, through word of mouth and through our own reputation that we've now developed, we have been growing, growing, growing steadily. At first, we were the teachers. We brought all these men here to teach them how to ski, but we soon learned that this activity was not about skiing. What it was about was the opportunity to ski. So many of our disabled population are shut out of so many of the mainstream activities that many of us as the able-bodied people take for granted. So therefore, uh, something like this was way out of their reach that they just thought they never would be able to do. Once these guys got here, we became the students because what happened was we began to see the abilities of the disabled population and our own perceptions about their limitations have totally changed. What we now do is we learn from the disabled population and our people have now become disciples and advocates for more rights and opportunities for the disabled population. So it's just been a phenomenal transition that is happening. I started with one client uh, approximately eight years ago. He, it was very difficult for him to learn how to ski. He'd fall every foot that he'd ski, he'd fall down. After many exhausting days like this, because of his courage, it taught me that this man was not going to give up. He wasn't going to give up until he was able to ski. Well, I can tell you right now that this man is skiing. He's skiing very well, and he's teaching others. And one of the students that he is teaching is going to participate in the 1992 Handicap Olympics. It's really been a tremendous kind of domino effect. And to see these men helping each other and learning from each other and knowing that they can accomplish, maybe not right away, but they can accomplish a certain ability, what the others have, it's been very, very rewarding to see that. Sandy, tell us a bit about the people who are involved in this. Well, there's over 100 participants here, including men and women. They come from 20 different states. The youngest veteran is 20 years old. The oldest veteran is 70 years old. They come from Miami. They come from Pennsylvania. They come from New York, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Illinois. So it's a really a wide cross-section of the country who are attending the clinic. This event has grown from a dream into a great event. What do you think is the potential for this National Winter Sports Clinic? I think the potential is just amazing, not so much in that we're talking about developing skiers to become champions, and although we are having skiers who are becoming champions, but I think what has happened is we find so many of our disabled community coming up here, and just the challenge and knowledge that they get out of skiing enables them to go back to their own lives and maybe some of the obstacles and barriers that they feel or that they have to overcome aren't so difficult anymore. The real exciting part about this program is that they are taking the skills that they are learning here at this program and applying them to their daily living skills. And because of that, they are developing such self-confidence and such a positive self-image in themselves that anything they want to do in their life is, is there if they're willing to dedicate themselves to meet that challenge. Sandy, being here with this special group of people, it's easy to get caught up in the energy and the excitement. It's very frustrating and extremely re rewarding all at the same time. You know, when I see a person who comes here and uh, doesn't have a lot of motivation in sports, 
or outdoor activities, you know, and he comes and he says to you, I don't think I can do this, you know. And we take him up there and applying a little technique, you know, and by golly, he takes off skiing, you know. That's the most satisfying thing for me is that maybe then he's going to lead a little fuller life. Yeah. And then he thinks, well, if I can ski, maybe I can do other things. Maybe I can water ski. Maybe I can uh, go get a job. Maybe can. I can get married, you know, have a family. And anything's possible when you believe it. You can believe Rick Isom when he tells you anything is possible. Since suffering a paralyzing injury in Vietnam, Rick has not only learned to ski, he's earned dozens of medals and world championships for the disabled and is ranked number one in the nation, fourth in the world in the mono ski class. He volunteers his time and expertise along with fellow disabled ski team member, Chris Young. Last year I was moved on to the developmental squad of the U.S. disabled ski team. And this year I haven't lost a race and plan on moving up from the development squad to the A team to be eligible to compete in international competition and the world championships. Chris broke his back in a plane crash while serving with the Coast Guard in Alaska. He started as a participant in the Winter Sports Clinic. Now he's an instructor. This year coming back and trying to give a little back to what they've given me because they gave me that boost and that, that initial get up and go and gave me some direction now. And skiing is great, but I never had any direction after the accident. I had my career in the Coast Guard and after the accident I had no direction, nothing to do. Just kind of be a bum and now I'm a ski bum. <laughs> Chris brought his buddy Todd Kelly to last year's clinic. Todd was ready to try out his custom-made mono ski, but he remembers the lonely feeling at the top of the mountain on his own for the first time. I was real scared. It was a strange feeling to be left alone on the side of a mountain, probably the first time. Um, I'd really felt quite so alone and unsure of what I could do. And then suddenly uh, this overwhelming feeling came that I could go any place I wanted to. I could go as fast as I wanted, slow into the trees, I could fall or I could take my time. And I skied here for six days. And by the time I left, it had built up my self-confidence uh, tremendously. This year, Todd is back as an instructor and enjoying every minute of it. And you see the difference that it's making on some of these guys and to see you know, they have a hard time maybe the first few times and they go down and, and after one good run or after maybe a day of practicing and come up the next day, they get this smile on their face that um, just won't be gone till the end of the snow season. Jerry Connors is a Vietnam veteran who lost a leg after a service-related accident. She says her handicap helps her teach other disabled skiers because they know she's been there. They see my frustration when I'm trying to help them. I can't get them off the ground myself. I have to bring an able-bodied person to help me for when they fall or I try to demonstrate something that's hard with me on one ski. I'll show them with my outriggers and they usually get the point. Getting them through the frustration is pretty much letting them, trying to get them to believe you when you say, you will ski, you will ski. You had one man finally linked together six turns. He goes, what did I just do? I said, it's called skiing. Vietnam veteran Lauren Greenhill has really made a lot of progress. From the beginning of the season to the end of the season, I'm just like night and day. I mean, when I started out, I was falling every, every 50 feet. That was back in December, and now I'm just <laughs> boogieing down that mountain. I'm gaining a lot of speed for one thing, going down that mountain, and I'm not afraid of it anymore. Uh, back, I would say a month ago, two months ago, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been able to go half as fast as I am going now, just because I didn't have that confidence yet. But now that I, I, I really feel like I'm one with the ski, and I know that I can control it, and I know that I can do it. Colorado Lieutenant Governor Mike Callahan is also a Vietnam veteran. His advice to other veterans considering challenging the ski slopes? Go out and do it because it builds confidence. It's you and that's snow. And uh, a lot of us have benefited from participating in skiing. Do it one-on-one, -on -one, do it with a buddy, uh, do it with a friend, but get on skis. This is a program that builds uh, confidence and self-esteem. Looking around here today and talking to these vets, they got smiles on their faces. They're, they're, they're not on the sidelines anymore. What the ski clinic has done is that you can participate. Everyone gets into the spirit of the clinic, including the Powderhorn staff. We've got a group of employees that uh, uh, thoroughly enjoy what's happening. They, they're fully behind the program. Uh, it's wonderful to see the enthusiasm of the veterans and what they get out of it. Powderhorn has hosted the Winter Sports Clinic since its beginning three years ago. With an abundance of intermediate terrain, it's the perfect resort for this event. The beginner terrain is necessary for uh, the veterans who are first starting into the program and it's their first experience on snow and the sleds. Uh, as they progress, 
uh, the intermediate slopes, which we have an abundance of, seems to be the type of terrain that's uh, most conducive to, to the advancement to that level. The VA thinks so much of the Winter Sports Clinic, Acting Director Tom Harvey spent several days here. Well, it makes me real proud to be a veteran and to see people like this with the determination that they show and the enthusiasm for living in spite of some really serious setbacks they obviously have taken in their lives. It just makes me proud to be a, to be a part of the agency that is, is working with them to help them, to enable them to do these other things. It makes you feel good. Harvey joined fellow Vietnam veterans on the slopes at Powderhorn. He is a strong supporter of the Winter Sports Clinic. It enables these individuals to get a personal benefit but it enables them to be a role model for other disabled individuals in, in our society to say, to see, gee, you know, maybe that's something I ought to think about doing even though I'm in a wheelchair. Hundreds of volunteers make this program work in much the same way the VA medical system as a whole relies on volunteerism. Throughout our system, we have about 85,000 volunteers that work in VA hospitals. Uh, they volunteer about 12 million hours of their time each year. They're doing it because because many of them are themselves veterans or are the wives, oftentimes the widows of veterans, uh, and they want to do something, to give something back. And they do those jobs with care and concern and love, and that's something that's very hard to come by.